Hey, gun people. Talk about uh, testifying in court and uh, how cops sometimes deal or, or, or what happens if you were to watch testimony in court. Now, not all states are the same. That when, when, when a case goes to, when somebody's charged with a crime and it goes to court, some places will do what's called a grand jury to where the grand jury hears and decides whether or not the guy should be charged. And that's kind of called a probable cause hearing to a certain extent. They basically decide, was there a crime committed? Does the guy likely do it? And should it proceed to a judge in a trial? And some states, I think New York uses a grand jury to do that. In California, they use what's called a preliminary hearing. And a preliminary hearing is your, your second court appearance. Normally, when you get charged with a, co a crime, there's three court appearances. There's your first one, which is your bail hearing, where you plead not guilty or guilty, and your bail is set. Um, now, everybody pleads not guilty. Even if you try to plead guilty, the lawyer, the judge, nobody's going to take your plea. Because it's too easy to get overturned later to come back and say, he didn't know, he wasn't aware of his rights, he, he pled guilty by mistake, it was a mistake of fact, he didn't have representation. So, there's gonna, so our system, I mean, to me, it's like, why do you even have a, why do you even have a, a first thing to see if a guy's going to plead guilty? Just charge it and say the guy pleads not guilty. Nobody pleads guilty, and even if you do plead guilty, no one's going to accept your plea of guilty unless you get a lawyer. They're going to still schedule a second appearance. They're still going to find a hundred reasons to try and talk you out of it. You, the judge is going to have to say on the record, are you sure? Are you making this guilty plea with full knowledge that you can go to prison for the rest of your life? And I can come. And or do, do you know that you're entitled to counsel? And they have to go through all. I, I think in all my years, I don't think I've ever seen anybody plead guilty. So I mean, in 30 years or so, plus years, never seen somebody plead guilty. So why do they even have the process? Because it's a system, and you can't change it, and it's a process, and it gets a. It gets somebody who's paying an attorney another court appearance so they can charge more money and it supports lawyers and lawyers support the courts and the courts support the system and it's a scam. So nobody pleads guilty. Everybody pleads not guilty. So your first court appearance, which is BS, you go, you plead not guilty, you get your barrel hearing. Your second court appearance is going to be what's called a preliminary hearing. And that's where you come in and the DA shows the judge that one, we think a crime's been committed and why we think you committed it. So he has to lay out certain facts and it's kind of a prima facie case, kind of, it just, it, it's not the full case, but you just gotta get enough to where the judge goes, yeah, I think this needs to be set for trial. And basically what that does is it locks down the defendant to hire a lawyer, if he gets a public defender, because he's a full-time crook and somebody asks, how do you get a public defender? Well, all the crooks, welfare rats, all the people that don't have jobs, that don't plan, that just go out and commit crimes, they all get public defenders. If you have a job, pay taxes, uh, own, own a property, own a car, if you're any way a contributing citizen, you don't get a public defender. you got to go out and hire a lawyer. So, uh, another great system that promotes doing the wrong thing. So in a preliminary hearing, you, you set this up and, and you, you deal in that preliminary hearing, the defense can bring up things that he thinks is an issue, like a suppression case. Now, I've only had evidence suppressed, I think, one time that I remember. And uh, I guess I can, I can tell you about that case. I wanted to get it, and then you go to, and then you go to trial. They pick the jury, etc. So that's your third court appearance. So when when a, when a when a defense thinks that he can get some of your evidence thrown out, they have what's called a suppression hearing, and that's where the cop that got the evidence, the defense, and the prosecutor goes and they argue in front of the judge why this evidence should be admitted. And they don't do this on all evidence because some evidence is clear, it's admitted. You got it the right way, the defense looks at it and goes, there's no way we're going to get this suppressed. But sometimes they will try to throw something against the wall and say, man, if, unless we get this suppressed, you're going to be screwed. So let's try to get it suppressed under some bullshit. Which 
I think they did in my case, and it worked because the judge suppressed it. I think the judge was wrong. I think the defense, uh, the prosecution did a shitty job because he kind of gave up, but whatever. I'll, I'll give you the facts of the case. I stop a guy. I'm in, again, high crime area, gang, looking for dope. Uh, this guy, him and his buddy's got his loud music playing. They're driving kind of reckless in the area, driving a hoopty mobile. Uh, so I light them up and pull them over. And I can't remember whether no license plates, speeding. They, 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 did, they did something. But as I said before, when I stop people, my intent's never to give them a ticket. I'm always looking for something bigger. I didn't know if these guys were into drugs, if they were into stealing things, if they were into some other crime, if they were on parole probation. I could search them, maybe find a gun, a knife. So... Again, I'm, I'm focusing on bad guys. So I go, I pull this car over. As I approach the car, there's a stereo laying in, uh, a car stereo laying in the back of the seat. No big deal. So I ask for his driver's license. I get his driver's license. They're extremely nervous. Both guys are, are in panic mode. They're shaking. Way nervous just for a traffic stop. Um, the guy, I ran him, the driver, and he had some prior arrest for drugs, so I was like, okay, if he's got prior arrest for drugs, he's probably using drugs, carrying drugs, or whatever. So, I asked him for consent to search the car, and he says no. And I go, alright. So I look at the stereo in the back, and the wires are cut off. Now, most people that are putting in a stereo or getting a stereo, the wires aren't cut. They have a little thing that you connect so when you disconnect a radio, you disconnect the male and female plug, and then you reconnect it. Or if you buy a stereo new, it has a little male-female plug. You don't go to the store and buy a stinking car stereo with the wires cut off. So in my mind, the stereo was probably stolen. Now, car stereos are never in a system, so when you run them, they never come back stolen. Because nobody has a serial number. The only way to get stereo number on your car stereo is take the thing out. How many people take their car stereos out to write down a serial number? Nobody. So when somebody steals your car stereo, it's pretty much a loss. You file a report and you do your insurance. But the odds of the cop finding it without the serial number is slim to none and slim left town. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, this is probably stolen property. I go, who's stereo? Uh, it's mine. Where'd you get it? From a friend. That's the standard excuse. Well, what's your friend's name? John, what's his last name? I don't know. Okay, you got his receipt? You got a bill of sale? No. Uh, so I look at the stereo and I'm like, okay, again, it's in plain view. I'm on a traffic stop. I'm where I'm supposed to be. Anytime I see evidence of a crime, I can seize it. So I pick it up. I look at it. And I go, man, these wires are cut off. I said, what are you going to do with the stereo? Uh, I'm going to try to fix it. I go, isn't that a clue that the wires are cut off that it's probably stolen? He goes, I don't know it's stolen. Because... Stolen property, crooks that know, in order to charge someone with stolen property, you have to know it was stolen or reasonably know it was stolen. You can't, it can't just be stolen. I mean, if I go buy a car and I get a bill of sale and it comes back stolen, you can't charge me with stolen property because I didn't know it was stolen. I did the right thing when I bought it. So, crooks know this. So, when I say, it looks, that's a clue to me that it's probably stolen. He goes, I don't know it's stolen. Basically, you can't prove it's stolen. You ain't got nothing. So he was, he was kind of a savvy criminal. So, and I could pick this up by dealing with him. And I think maybe the passenger might have been on parole or, or, or on probation. So we pulled him out of the car. We searched him. Got the driver out so he couldn't reach for weapons. That's an officer safe thing. You get the driver out if I'm dealing with another guy. Well, when we search the car, of course, there's dope. There's crank. There's a scale. There's uh, money. There's a little what we call pay and owe sheet. It's a little sheet where they do a little code, like how much they sold it for and what they bought it for and whatever. So I'm like, okay, this is a good sales dope case. I book the guy, I arrest him. Well, he's looking at a hard time because he's got prior arrest. And um, so his defense attorney is like, of course, a public defender. Me and you's paying for him. And we've paid for the last 20 arrests that he's had. So we go to court, and the defense attorney goes, I want to suppress this. I don't, I don't think the cop had a right to search the car. Well, I had a right to search it, one, because the pastor was on probation. And if he's on probation, he could have hid something. And it's reasonable when you're stopped, if you're carrying something, you usually slide under the seat or throw it. I mean, that's just what crooks do. So that's reasonable. It's easy to get in there. So the defense attorney, I get some, or the prosecutor, some young dude out of Sacramento, and I'm like, and he's like, I was like, they're really trying to suppress this? I said, I'm on all kind of solid ground. 
I said the passenger was on probation, I was on an authorized traffic stop, and I saw evidence of a crime in plain view. And, and the prosecution, the, the, he was a young guy, <laughs> and he was, he's like, man, I don't know, it looks bad, I think they're going to get, he goes, this is my first suppression hearing, but I think, I think they're going to get it suppressed, and, and I was like, dude, get a grip, I said, there's no freaking way they should get this suppressed, but he, he had never done one, so he was all nervous, and, and the system, in the system, that's kind of the way things happen, it's kind of luck of the draw, you get a good prosecutor, you get a good cop, you get a, 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 an experienced cop, you get an innocent prosecutor, all those things are fact. You get a good defense attorney who knows some tricks, or you get a new defense attorney that doesn't. So the system's not equal or fair. It all has a lot of variables on, what, on how it's going to turn out. So I'm looking at this prosecutor, and I'm like, dude, I'm about to slap him go, dude, grow a set and freaking get in here and get this evidence in here. This is a good case. So we go through there, and the judge... He's like, you know what? And he asked me, he goes, well, when, he goes, did you write him a ticket? I go, no. He goes, why not? I said, because I, I, I saw he committed a violation. I stopped him, and I wasn't going to write him a ticket. I was either going to find out if he was on probation or parole, if he was in doing, engaged in some other illegal activity, and then give him a warning for the violation to move on. He's like, well, obviously, it's some liberal-ass judge in Sacramento. I couldn't believe he dismissed it. He goes, well... Since you weren't, this is like no legal ruling whatsoever. There's no precedence for this whatsoever. He's like, since you admitted that you weren't going to give him a ticket, you really shouldn't have even looked in the car and seen the stereo with the cut wires. And just because the wires are cut, it isn't clear cut that it was stolen property. And I think I'm going to uh, suppress the... Uh, radio. And I'm just like, all right, whatever. I don't, what, I don't give a shit. I mean, I was kind of pissed, but I was like, whatever. The guy walks for the drugs. I don't give a shit. Maybe he'll sell drugs to your kids, you dumbass. And he'll over D, and then you'll be crying on how the cops aren't arresting people. So they, they, they suppress the case. They suppress the, that, which brings us into fruits of the poisonous tree. Because, they, because the judge suppressed the radio, which was my probable cause for seeing in plain view, Therefore, anything I found after that was fruits of the poisonous tree and wasn't admissible. So the drugs and the dope and the scales and all the shit was inadmissible. So the case got tossed out. So, you know, of course, a couple of other cops are like, Ooh, you lost that. Ooh, you didn't. You know, they're going to give you shit. I know cops, they get 50% of their shit suppressed because they do shitty searches. But I was like, hey, this is the first one. I said, I don't give a shit. I still think it's legal. But anyway, so it got suppressed. Well... Later on, about probably six months later, I'm eating, and, and, and during this trial, there's a woman that's kind of like mad dog of me. We call it mad dog in our eye fucking, uh, where somebody's just, you know, they hate you, and they're just staring at you, and they give you that evil lie. Well, there's this woman sitting behind the defendant staring at me, so I'm assuming that's his wife or girlfriend. And I mean, she was just like hating my life. Because I think I end up, when I towed the car, she couldn't come get it. She had to leave work. So we end up towing it and costing her money. She was all pissed on the phone, and... You know, she was pissed at her husband. I'm tired of him. This is it. I'm over. I'm leaving. He's done this before. So there was a big issue with her, but I'd never seen her, so I assumed that was her. Well, a few months later, I don't know, three, six months later, me and my buddy is sitting in a restaurant eating lunch, and this girl comes over, and I don't know who the hell she is. And and we're we're working, but we're undercover. We got our shirts on, our guns underneath. So, and you know, that's the way we drove around to work. So she didn't. Most people wouldn't know we were cops. She comes over and she goes, do you remember me? And I go, no, should I? So immediately, as soon as she says that, I'm like moving my arm to my gun. Is she going to pull a gun or knife? Did I put her? <laughs> Who is this crazy woman? What's going on? So I'm kind of formulating a plan. All this shit's going through my head. Oh, shit, how do I know her? Was she coming over here? What's going to happen next? Is there somebody else? And so my mind's going a mile a minute trying to figure out what's going to, ha what's going to happen next. And she goes, you arrested my husband. And I go, Okay, I don't remember it. She goes, well, you should remember it because you lost in court. <laughs> and I, went, I said, oh, was this the radio and the dope dude? She goes, yeah. She goes, well, I just came over to thank you. And I was like, what? She comes off as a jerk at first, then she thanks me. I'm like, what? She goes, even though that guy got thrown out, my husband has totally turned his life around. He got off drugs. I threatened him leaving. He got help. She goes, that was the best thing that ever happened to him. 
and, and I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you did that. I go, okay, good. I said, I'm glad it worked out. And she walked away. We finished eating, and that was that. So now everybody can say that I'm a dirty cop because I got evidence suppressed, and all the knuckleheads that are on here hating cops for every reason can, ah, I knew it. I knew it. He planted the radio. It was a plant. Shut up, big dummies. All right, <laughs> we'll end that there.